This question comes from Nate. He says, what do you think about social security, especially for us younger folks? It really concerns me that it is not a topic of discussion for anyone or any politician at this time. My thoughts are that it has and will always be a scam and it seems it's not going to benefit me in the least bit by the time I reach retirement age, currently 28. So why am I still paying 6 to 8% of my income into this bogus program? It just blows my mind that no one my age mentions this topic ever well that's a loaded question and for starters do i think that social security is going away probably not the fact is that social security is mostly funded by payroll taxes the benefits in 10 20 30 or 40 years could look very different from what they are today but is it going away probably not now is it a scam or a bogus program as nate stated that depends on who you ask really some would say that it is the greatest program ever while some would go as far as calling it a ponzi scheme because by definition, a Ponzi scheme uses money from the new investors to pay the old ones. And since Social Security pays retirees using money collected from current workers, is it a Ponzi scheme? I mean, it's a great comparison and a great analogy, but there's more to the story. So let's look into it a bit more. First of all, how much are you paying into Social Security? If you're working for an employer, 12.4% of your income goes into Social Security. For most people, this is a split into two parts. You pay 6.2% of your paycheck and your employer pays the other 6.2% for a total of 12.4%. Now, if you're self-employed, you pay the full 12.4%. You might think it's just 6.2% of my paycheck. No big deal, right? But if you add it up over your entire working career, you'll end up paying a significant amount. And that's why, frankly, people have a problem with it. Many argue that you could invest that money yourself for your future instead of handing it over to the government and relying on them for benefits when you retire. Benefits which might change over the years and that's a fair point the future of social security has been a topic of discussion for many years if the system remains as it is it will only be able to provide full benefits for people until 2034 after that starting 2035 it is projected that social security will only be able to pay about 78 percent of the benefits notice that it will still pay 78 percent of the benefits the headlines suggesting that social security is going away and all the fear mongering are just headlines. These headlines can be very misleading and oversimplified. Instead of jumping to conclusions and arguing with complete strangers online, understand that while benefits might be reduced in the future, they should still be there, just not to the full extent. So no, social security is not going away. Not right now at least. Okay, so we've established that there is a shortfall. There is a problem that needs to be fixed and no one wants to fix it. Why doesn't anyone want to fix it it's all politics right both political parties have largely avoided making the tough decision needed to fix the problem and it will be a tough decision you will make people unhappy no matter how you approach the issue and that's why both parties have avoided the issue altogether that being said there are only a few ways or a few possible ways the congress could address this issue or the shortfall what can they do one proposed solution that's been discussed for a while is increasing the cap on taxable wages from $168,600 to a higher amount what does this mean if you earn 1 million dollars in 2024 you will contribute the same amount to social security as someone earning $168,600 this is because there's cap on contribution beyond this limit you don't pay into social security and while this cap is adjusted annually based on various factors such as inflation critics argue that it should be raised significantly more so one possible solution is to remove the cap entirely or raise it to a much higher limit, say $300,000 or $400,000. As an example, if the cap is raised to, let's say, $300,000 and you earn $250,000 as a W-2 employee, you would pay into Social Security on the full $250,000 of income, which totals to $31,000, and your employer pays half of that while you pay the other half totaling to $15,500. Another likely scenario is increasing the age when people can claim full social security benefits. This is a more likely scenario than the first option and I'll tell you why. The last time social security had a reserve shortfall was in 1983. At the time, Congress passed a bipartisan law that raised the full retirement age 
from 65 to 67 and began taxing social security benefits. We're seeing similar proposals now with one pushing for full retirement age to be 70 for those born after 1977. The rationale being that people are generally living longer and therefore also working longer. And by the way, this is at or near the top of the list of proposals to fix social security. The third solution, which I personally dislike the most, is raising payroll taxes. Currently, workers and employers together pay 12.4% for social security and 2.9% for Medicare. But we might need to pay more. How much more? If payroll taxes were increased by 3.5 percentage points right away, 1.75% for employers and the other 1.75% for employees, the government would fund benefits until 2098 and we have a one year reserved at the end. How they came up with this calculation is in the Social Security Trustee Report of 2024. Realistically, these are the potential solutions. However, this does not mean that the solution will be exactly as described. They could vary. For example, they might include a combination of higher taxes and higher retirement age or something along those lines. For years, financial advisors have used the three-legged stool metaphor to explain how to secure a comfortable retirement in America. The three legs being a solid pension from your job, enough personal savings, and social security payments. But that's changing. Pensions that offer guaranteed income for life are becoming rare and not many people have enough save to support themselves throughout retirement. Today, only 7% of older Americans have a reliable income from all three sources. The thing is, Social Security was never meant to cover all your expenses in retirement. And the Social Security website says that very clearly. That's why personal savings, having a paid for home in retirement, workplace retirement plans like 401k plans, and other assets are important. Some retirees could handle a reduction in benefit, but those who depend entirely on social security benefits for most of their income could be in a disastrous situation if benefits were reduced. And our government knows that. And that's why I personally think that benefits are not going to get reduced. People just aren't saving enough for retirement. And there will be a huge chunk of the society that will continue to rely on social security as their main source of income in retirement. Now, whether you agree that Social Security is an effective program or not, I think it's hard to deny that the program is effective in reducing poverty in the US. Without these benefits, an additional 22.7 million Americans would fall below the poverty line, including 16.5 million Americans aged 65 and older. And just as I took a break from recording this video, I came across this comment. This comment is obviously in exaggeration, but there is some truth to this comment in the context that seniors rely heavily on this benefit. Another thing that does not get talked about enough is that the nation's birth rate has been steadily dropping, leading to fewer younger workers available to support the benefits of older workers. In 1955, there were over eight workers for every social security beneficiary. Today, there are only 2.8 workers per beneficiary. And by 2035, the Social Security Administration expects this number to decrease to 2 point three only. So even if we temporarily fix the problem, we may have to fix it again down the road. For those who rely on the benefits, any new solution would probably be introduced gradually over several years. People who are close to or already in retirement would likely be spared from immediate changes. Many Americans have planned their retirement based on certain expectations about Social Security. So it wouldn't be fair to change those expectations suddenly without giving people enough time to adapt. Is Social Security already going away? Probably not, but the benefits could look very different from what they are today. Something has to change and something will change. 